What is up amigos? 5 days, 21 hours, 59 minutes and 12 seconds. Yes, I am looking at the timer patiently waiting. Today we have the Ren Barbarian build in all of its bloody glory. As always, if you guys are interested in more Diablo 4 content, hit that like button and subscribe. It helps the video get out to more people and helps the overall growth of the channel, which I greatly appreciate. So, Barbarian Rend was the go-to leveling build for the beta test and bleed and poison damage does insane damage, which is why it was the go-to. Bleed and poison also has great scaling capability throughout the game. We also take full advantage of thorn damage early on. And it might even deal a ton of damage to trash packs mid and end game as well. So again, today we're going to be going over the red build and all of its bloody glory. So let's start off with the pros and cons. The first pro, as I stated, it was the best level and build. It probably still is the best level and build for Barb. So if you choose Barb as your go-to starter, then I definitely would look into using this build. On top of being one of the best leveling builds, if not the best, it also is just a great basic build. This will easily carry you into mid to late game, and if you wanna respec towards then, you will easily be able to. It's very easy to play, it's very simple. You run around, you spam rend. That's really all you have to do in the build. And another big pro for me is with these types of builds, that imply or apply vulnerable inflictions it's imperative that you have multiple sources and this build has that so the big cons are because it's a dot and go build it's very boring sometimes so if this doesn't suit your play style if you don't like dot classes in general this probably isn't the build for you aside from that it does not have good mobility outside charge i mean it has no innate movement speed at all throughout the build and charge is really our only mobility that we have and i believe it's on about a 12 second cooldown worse it's on a 17 second cooldown so as i stated before because it gets boring um the overall con is it's a dot melee class and everyone knows how they feel about melee classes in Diablo. It's been a whole big thing. And the last and final con is it can feel squishy sometimes because it does have less layers than the other builds. So enough with that, let's just get into it. We are going to be using Flay as our main basic skill of choice, allowing us to inflict our first stackable bleed effect at our target has a big lucky hit chance at 50%. Enhanced Flay gives us a 10% chance to make the enemy vulnerable for two seconds. This actually doubles if we use a two-handed weapon. Battle Flay, when our Flay deals direct damage to an enemy, they take 10% increased bleed damage from you for the next three seconds. So this enhances our bleed damage. Our main core skill of the build is Rend. Cleaving enemies in front of us, inflicting a massive bleed to all enemies hit over 5 seconds. Enhanced Rend extends vulnerability durations by 2 seconds. This allows us to keep vulnerable status on enemies almost indefinitely. Violent Rend makes it so Rend deals at about 12% damage to enemies inflicted with vulnerable status. And then again, the Enhanced Rend just extends the overall duration on vulnerable enemies by 2 seconds. Challenging Shout now this is a very very cool skill when you pair it up with our second half of the build which is thorn so challenge and shout is going to taunt nearby enemies forcing everyone around you to attack you you also gain 40 percent damage reduction for six seconds enhanced challenge and shout gives us a 20 percent bonus maximum life while challenge and shout is active and strategic challenge and shouts is the big part of this is while it's active we gain thorns equal to 30% of our max life. So as I said, charge is our main mobility choice, but it's not only that. So charge is pretty cool because if you manage with enhanced charge, if you manage to knock enemies back into terrain, you will stun them and they'll take 15% extra damage. And then mighty charge is our other source of vulnerable infliction. Once we damage enemies with the charge, we inflict vulnerable to potentially everybody in that charge. Charge has a big radius, it impacts, it has a big impact radius rather, so it's a good source of vulnerable. Now Rupture, Rupture is definitely a unique ability. Rupture itself, the impact damage when you skewer is not what you're looking at. What you're looking at when you look at Rupture is the fact that when we skewer our enemies and rip the weapon out, we actually damage enemies for the total bleed amount that they have active on them 
and we remove all bleeding damage from them. So if we stack up enough bleed damage on a boss, so to say, we can rip it and instantly deal damage. I definitely think Rupture is way more of a boss skill than anything. So this is definitely an open skill. If you do not want to do it for bossing, if you're not bossing, if you're open world farming, maybe you can run Warcry. This is definitely an optional ability. Our ultimate of choice would be Wrath of the Berserker. This just gives us the opportunity to pop berserking for the entire duration. Every time we use Flay, we grant ourselves berserking for an additional five seconds while Wrath is active. With Prime Wrath of Berserker, our berserking grants us 20% increased movement speed and 30% fury gen. And with Supreme, every 50 fury we spend increases Berserk's damage bonus by 25%. So our keystone of choice would be Gushing Wounds. When causing an enemy to bleed, you have a chance equal to your crit strike chance to increase the bleed amount by 100% of your crit damage bonus. This is just really nice to stack up big, big dots. And an added bonus is if we overpower on a bleeding enemy, it creates an explosion that inflicts 11% bleed damage over 5 seconds to all surrounding enemies. So our passives here. Our passives, we're definitely taking pressure point. This is another source of just a RNG vulnerable, but it's still another source. So it's a lucky hit chance. Your core skills have up to a 30% chance to inflict vulnerable for 2 seconds. We take Imposing Presence, which gives us a massive 15% additional max life. This is going to scale like crazy mid to end game. We take three to outburst. This gives us a 60 flat thorn. Also 10 extra thorns for each 50 bonus max life you have. This isn't percent, this is a flat value. So mid to end game, like I said, with this imposing presence, we're gonna be gaining a 15% additional max life. And as a flat value, that could that could just be massive, massive thorn damage. So then we take tough as nails, increasing our overall thorns damage by a percentage, in this case, 9%. Plus, when enemies hit us, they take an additional 10% of our thorns as bleed damage over five seconds. Now keep in mind, our flay enhances all of our bleed damage, our battle. So the more bleeds, the more bleeds, the it's just, it's never ending. We take aggressive resistance for 3% damage reduction while Berserk, and this is just something, you know, nifty to have. You can pump two more points into here if you want. Again, we have options between Rupture and just between other passives that you may want to try and min-max throughout your leveling experience or if you take this game in the late game. Prolific Fury, while Berserking, Fury Gen is increased by 18%. Battle Fervor, this is amazing. This is our main source of upkeep on our Berserking. When Brawling skill damages at least one enemy, we gain Berserking for three seconds. This means our charge. So when we charge into an enemy, we have the potential to CC them, stun them, and we'll always pop Berserking. And Berserking, if you're not aware, gives us 25% damage and 30% movement speed. Pit Fighter, you deal 9% increased damage to close enemies and gain 6% distant damage reduction. So all those pesky projectiles. Slaying Strike, you deal 22.5% increased damage against injured enemies. Again, for those who may not be aware, injured means 35% or less HP. It's technically an execute phase. No Mercy, you have 9% increased crit strike chance against immobilized, stunned, or slowed enemies. This brings us to our next passive. This is always going to be active on this build because of this. Hamstring. Our bleed effects slow enemies by 10%. We are going to have bleed up on everything. Rend is an AoE bleed ability. And then cut to the bone, your bleed effects deal 18% increased damage to vulnerable enemies. Now here's another one that is easily, you can replace this, especially if you opt to use two handers for the, the rend build instead of one handers. I like the idea of having attack speed and being able just to spam rend as fast as I can. So I will be taking duelist when I try out this build, which grants 9% attack speed while using one handed weapons. We take one point in the tempered fury and one point of invigorating fury for a heal for each 100 fury spent and max fury. If you want, you can take these points away also if you tend to go to two hand and put them into any one of these four passives on the side. Heavy hand for crit strike damage. Increased damage to stunned or vulnerable enemies, which we both, which we have the chance to do both. 
This is with bludgeoning weapons. We don't really have a lot of overpower chance, so maybe not brute force. And concussion is just an extra stun chance with bludgeoning weapons at the lucky hit. So yeah, all in all, that is the build. Again, I think this is going to still be the fastest barb leveling build because I do know for a fact that bleed is overpowered, just like poison. And it is going to scale and just carry you through the campaign. So as always, if you guys made it this far, thank you so much. And if you haven't, go ahead and check out my other build guide videos. We are going to be doing one more. Yeah, one more barb video. We have a whirlwind that we just pumped out yesterday. We've done rogue and druid. And we're finishing off with the two popular classes, Necro and Sorceress, all the way up until release. So until next time, amigos, take care.